this year off the top of my head we've probably had any number of times you know 10 academy products in you know in the in the squad on a match day um, and we've got lots of players out on loan who are learning their trade in sort of conference south level and below and it's it can only benefit so um, it's very very important and I'm not sure why not too many other other clubs don't do it. I think it's recognised by all the board actually that um, you know, the, the, it is the, the academy that has kept the club afloat. We, we, we can't operate if we don't do it. So if I stop giving the opportunity to young players, the club will stop, stop operating. An owner sold out in 2001, I believe, and was uh, taken over by uh, some gentlemen called Russell and Lewis, who were like Bonnie and Clyde, uh, and they turned a debt into 4.8 million. And you know that obviously then went beyond the, the rounds of people here at this club coming in and, and supporting it. So uh, at that stage, the trust was formed and they set about uh, restructuring the club. Obviously, we, we all know we went into administration. You know, people think it's very easy from the outside, but of course, most clubs, as you well know, have somebody in some form or another philanthropic towards the club. Lots of them put an awful lot of money in and, uh, and they prop up their clubs. This club is difficult because we don't have that. Where we don't have a philanthropic investor, we have an academy that does particularly well and brings in a significant amount of money through the sale of players, and I'm sure you can list them as well as I can. The first one that springs to mind is Dean Moxie, who left us and then went on to play in the Premier League and still playing now, down at Torquay. Um, George Friend, you know, Matt Grimes, Ollie Watkins. We'll never forget the goal that he scored against Plymouth you know, when he beat three players and put it in the top corner in the last few minutes. Ollie Watkins goes into Exeter Park lot. It feels like that's our, our role in football. We're not going to be a, a heavyweight in, in terms of, you know, the big the big six, but we're Exeter, we, we produce youth academy players and, and we make them great. Yeah, I remember sort of starting with the academy maybe 12, 12 years ago and I remember a slide on a presentation that we had that had a load of the top clubs badges around Europe um, and I remember the aim was to produce players for that, that level. We, we didn't just magically turn out Ollie Watkins, I think the fact that we had a a real strong desire to produce international footballers that could go from our first team and beyond was a was a major factor. The way that the club's built has been built on consistency, consistency of a manager, consistency of a of a desire to bring those young players through, and off the back of that. The rewards of that have been that players have gone on to, to establish careers at a higher level. Every club in the country, uh, in the Football League and Premier League, has got an academy, but not every first team manager wants to play the academy players. Not every first team staff have got an understanding of the value that that brings. Um, not every club is as passionate about their young players coming through. The reason why I believe in it is because I believe in, in the academy, I believe in giving young players a chance. I believe if we get the balance of, of youth and experience, but also youth and quality, then they can thrive at our level of football. But also the, the thing that so many don't see is that if you, if you have a player that comes through and he plays for you at 17 or 18, they might be playing for £250 a week, £300 a week, £400. But if you had to 
bring somebody in with experience to fill that position, you'd probably be somewhere in the thousands per week. You know, it's a short career, but it's well paid during that short time. It's been no secret the fact that the club has generated a lot of money through player sales and also with things like Adams and um, Ollie playing for England and Ethan playing for Wales, there's good finance, financial gains in, in that. We've done it consistently now for the best part of 15 to 20 years um, in, in terms of selling players but the, the Ollie windfall was the, the gift which he kept on giving and um, the initial fee from when he moved to, to Brentford and then obviously the, the, the much larger and bigger fee we got from his sell on when he went to Aston Villa and even some add-ons from Premier League appearances and international appearances as well. We are, I think, aware that you know we have to be a selling club to keep the club sustainable. You know, we players have to move on for these fees um, because it's what keeps the club ticking, um, and then it allows for the further development of facilities and operations at the training ground, which are being worked on now because of the money that has been garnered from those those academy graduates being sold. The difference of this training ground: we never had a 3G, we never had pitches where you can play on every single day. Our, our stadiums got better and better. Like even the away stand, everything like that, everything's just got so much better. The smaller amounts, and this is going to sound terrible, but the smaller amounts between 50 and 100 and 250 grand obviously help the, the club function, um, but they don't last very long. Whereas if we get over a million pounds for a player, that's absolutely huge. And you put that in comparison to, to my budget, that's not far off my season's budget and, and so on and so forth. So there's, there's all sorts of different aspects which you try and concentrate on. Um, but understanding the value of a player and when to sell them is another key aspect of managerial work XSC. Um, we have to let them go when it's the right time for the player but also the right time for the football club and by, what I mean by saying that is that we've got to get full value through when a, a player leaves. I think having a core of players generally is important because like I said before when you have to teach your methods and the way that you want to work that takes time. Um, and until the players are comfortable in that, you won't see the best of them. So what you've probably seen this year is players that have been actually involved for two or three seasons, they've gone through their teething problems in terms of the academy product, and it, again, the one thing I would have to say for Matt is he's stuck with them. First and foremost, whenever we're doing recruitment, we always look what's within the building. What's within the first team, what's within the academy, so straight away the, the first opportunity stays within. There's definitely some um, some games that I've watched where I've been sort of, oh god, that's not the, the best version of them. But it, it, it takes time. Um, so I do think they've been important this year, but they've been allowed to be important by growing in the environment over the past two or three years. There's chemistry already there. They've come through all the age groups and there's also a chemistry, but there's also a, a love for each other and a love for the club. And when I say love, there's probably a, an added little bit extra on a young player who's a homegrown talent to do well for their homegrown club. And because they've gone through the pathway and they've gone through hopefully that pathway, believing the end is their first team. If we kept all of every single product we possibly could, academy product we could, and put them all in a team right now from all age groups, we would be an outstanding team. But unfortunately, the, the realistic aspect of the club is trying to happen right now.